everyone, so Sally and I are here today to do kind of an ask me anything Q&A and we asked you guys for questions specifically for Sally for um, over on our Instagram a couple yeah. weeks ago here. So we have printed out all of your questions and I'm just going to go through them. Sally hasn't prepared. So Not really. Very haven't. <laughs> and we will answer your burning question. Yes. <laughs> all right. So the first question comes from the book's music life. Okay. And her question is really starting it off with a bang here. Would you ever dye your hair a crazy color? Oh, that's not book <laughs> bitch at all. <laughs> no. um, I don't think so. Your hair I is kind of a crazy color, color anyways. It's yeah. Like very red. I really like my natural color. Yeah. It's much less red than it was when I was a kid, but uh, I think until it like decides it's going to go brown or white or <laughs> some color that's not this, I'm gonna say no it's and never so nice. say never. Your hair color is not boring. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, okay, and oh, she has another question. Okay. Um, favorite kids show or movie that you love to watch this day? To this day? To this day? Kids show or movie? Mm -hmm. I love Pinky and the Brain. Oh my gosh. I was like, I loved Pinky and my Brain. favorite show when I was a kid. It was so funny. Is it's that hard. Canadian? No, no, it's Warner okay. Brothers. It was like Ste Steven Spielberg, I think. Or oh, at least wow. he was in, uh, involved in the beginning. If you don't know Pinky and the Brain, you absolutely have to go look it up. It's like an offshoot of the Animaniacs, which again, if you don't know it, go look it up. It's hilarious. <laughs> Harder to track down. As far as I know, it's not the like on any... Like <laughs> yeah. As far as I know, it's not on any streaming services, but uh, or at least not in Canada. But oh my gosh, it is, it's so, so funny. And uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll go with that one. I did love Pinky in the Brain as well. <laughs> Paola Alvar in 2019 is asking, what was the first book you read? Um, Like as a kid, do you think? Sure. Let's assume as a kid. Yeah. The first book I remember reading by myself was Matilda by Roald Dahl. Oh, excellent. Um, I think Matilda was the first one. I'm pretty sure it was like a Roald Dahl book for sure, but right. Matilda's the one that's burned in my brain. Um, I was read to a lot as a kid, both mm -hmm. by like by my mom and my sister. Um, but the first one I remember like reading to myself was was Matilda. Nice, and I was very proud of myself for it. It was a lot of fun. It's a good one because Matilda's bookish. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Love lit life says, "I just think you're wonderful." Oh, it's not a question. <laughs> Allison Rose 711 is asking, what topics or representation would you like to see more of in middle grade? Ooh, that is a great question. Um, hmm. What would I like to see more of? I would love to see more boy-girl friendships mm -hmm. that are just boy-girl friendships. They don't necessarily like lead to anything. No they don't crushes. Like yeah. They don't have crushes. They're just like awesome friends. Um, just across the board, like, more of seeing everybody in books. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just, like, diversity that's not, like, necessarily, like, a heavy topic or, right. like, just they just are. awesome kids of, of all shapes and sizes and whatnot uh, just being, like, the protagonist of the story. That's, mm -hmm. there, there just can't be enough of that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think middle grade it's starting. But it, oh, for sure. It was a bit a bit slow on the uptake. I guess it was. I think yeah, it's been doing it's been doing very well lately. Mm -hmm. Um I feel like especially this year there's a lot coming out. Yeah, it's absolutely really great. This is obviously an older question, but we can reiterate. Okay. A book blogger three is asking, do you have any idea what the theme for April is going to be? I do because we've announced it. <laughs> um the April theme is crack the code. So exciting. And it's so exciting. No, we're fine. Never mind. <laughs> um, so yes, we'll be announcing the May theme soon, but I won't. Uh, I won't announce it here. You'll have to keep your eye on our social media. Yep. Um, Sonia Frauen is asking best middle grade book ever. Whoa. <laughs> really uh, put me on the hot seat here, Sally. <laughs> best middle grade book ever. Okay, I'm gonna eliminate Harry Potter from the running because it is such a crossover phenomenon. Yeah. I won't even call it middle grade. More current, I'm super, super excited about the Nevermore series. Yes, um, so good. 
I still haven't even read the second one because my I'm I so behind heard. on my reading. I know you're <laughs> ahead of me right now, but I'm I'm so excited about like where that series is going. Mm -hmm. Jessica Townsend is amazing. Um, and then yeah, for me, and part of it is just like because I have such childhood attachments to it, but I know it's not just me. Like Roald Dahl is <laughs> incredible. I can't talk about him enough. Right. He uh, yeah he he maintains his his seat in the middle grade world. I think. Anyway, we are currently doing a challenge. I don't think either of us are succeeding very well where... Oh, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe not. I could be wrong. But Sally's reading Percy Jackson. Yeah. I need to read Roald Dahl and I haven't done it yet. You'll get there. I get there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm ahead of you in reading. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Um, Books and Mac has a few questions for us. Okay. Um, What's your go-to show, book, or song, or movie that gets you out of a slump? Ooh, what kind of slump? <laughs> a life slump. A life slump. The show, the show that I will always just put on to fill time or cheer me up or just like kind of keep me company is The Office. Right. The American Office, because there's more of it. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I can just like let that run in the background. I've seen the whole series through over a, a dozen times, I think. <laughs> it's just, it's very comforting. Um, yeah. That's a good one. That, that, that right? They were, you know, they're asking about all kinds of things, but I'm just going to stick with one TV show. One TV show. Uh, describe your favorite item in the next Owl Cray Jr. box in five words or less. Whoa! <laughs> five words or less. Okay, what's in this box? <laughs> Not spoiling things. Secret, code, DIY. I'm counting that as one word. <laughs> paper craft. There you go. That's Secret, good. code, DIY, paper craft. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> what book best describes you, your partner, or what you think love represents? Whoa. <laughs> okay, well, one of my favorite love stories is The Time Traveler's Way. Mm -hmm. That is certainly like a. Other things a that relationship, will make you cry. yeah, <laughs> a strong love story mm -hmm. and a complicated love story. So yeah, let's go with that one. Okay. That's my answer to that question. I feel and like if the, I think of an alternate. I'll, I feel like I'll this video in. is going to be a case of like when you have an argument with somebody, and five minutes later you're like, like wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. great, come back. <laughs> um, if you weren't working with books, what would you be doing? Um. I think I would probably still be working with something to do with kids in some capacity. That seems to be like what mm -hmm. most of my jobs have ended up right. being, even though I didn't like intend it that way. So I was about to say librarian, but that's still working with books. <laughs> <laughs> different though. Much different. Um, yeah, it's not like a sort of sales-ish position. No, yeah. Or a teacher. Or... <laughs> Yes, I admire all of the teachers yes. out there. I, I think I could do it, but it would be exhausting. You feel like an art teacher. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, librarian seems like a cheating answer, but that is my honest answer. If I wasn't doing this specific job, there's a good chance that I would like would, to. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to be a librarian. Yeah, librarians are the best. A cactus bookworm is asking, how did you start working for Apple Grade? Oh. Um, well, let's backtrack a decade or so, <laughs> where I met Robert and Karina, um, when the three of us were all working at the same toy store, um, in our, like, early 20s, uh, and then flash forward to about five years ago, sort of reconnected, mm -hmm. um, and they, I helped them pack the last mm -hmm. box that they packed by themselves in Vancouver before they uh, decided right. it's time to grow, <laughs> time to have somebody else do this for us. So I helped them. They were like renting a little space near where my parents lived. And uh, yeah, I was super interested in it. And then a little bit after that, they put out a call that they were looking for more help. So that's when Crystal and I joined the team as customer service. For more. Did that. I know. Uh, Crystal is much better at customer service than I am. <laughs> you don't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't do it anymore. <laughs> um, and you had also just joined, mm -hmm. I think, a little bit before the two of us. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, I was doing customer service for them for about six months while it was just still Owl Crate. But I was currently in school for publishing and knew that I wanted to work in children's publishing. And I was like about to graduate and thinking about moving to Toronto where all of the Canadian publishing houses are. Um, and then I was also working for a magazine and I got offered a position there, but it wasn't actually like what I wanted to do right. exactly. So I talked to Robert and Karina and I said, I would really like to do this if you guys are willing to take a chance on this. Right. Start off with a junior branch because we had kind of like talked about it a little bit, but um, right. it hadn't started yet. And then I think that's when they put together the first like test box for um, December 2016, it would have been. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then that one did really well. And so the following January, like, a, you know, a couple weeks after that one was sent out to everybody, we started Owl Cray Jr. and mm -hmm. uh, and launched our first box in March 2017. And, and, here, uh, we are. and here we are, in midway through 2019. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that's, how that's the evolution of Owl Cray Jr. <laughs> Book Alien is asking, if you had to pick only one fictional character to become, who would it be? Hmm. <laughs> To become. First thought is Hermione. Because she's very brave and she's very smart. She's kind of a know it all. Kind she of. She can do all the spells. And she can do all the spells. Um, and I love her. So I'm going to say Hermione. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Ginny, too. Mm. Ooh. Well, I'd rather be Ginny. I feel like I'm probably more like Hermione. You can keep than your I'm hair Ginny. if you were Ginny. That's true. <laughs> You're no, like, I'm gonna stick with Hermione. Okay. I'll just be the redheaded Hermione. Ooh, this is a, an interesting question. It's also books and Mac. Um, do you think a book represents an author's true feelings and values? Hmm. I think it really would depend on the author. Mm hmm. Hmm. So like not always, but potentially. Not always, but potentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. Is is. Can I chime in? I'm yeah, chiming in on your Q&A. Yes. <laughs> I think it really depends on genre and things like that. Like, obviously, yeah. if Stephen King's writing a murder, that doesn't mean that Stephen King likes murders. Right. Right now, like, you know, so like, I, I think, think it depends also, on the situation. Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting question. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I mean, a lot of people do like write what they know. Of course, yeah. So if somebody is like, Super liberal, for example, I doubt they would be writing, mm. or I'd be really curious to see what it would be like if they were like writing a protagonist who was on, who was like right wing, for example, or vice right. versa. That would be hard because it, like yeah, you'd have to. It'd not, be hard not to write your, them exactly. really. It's interesting question. Very it's a interesting good discussion. Question. I'm sure yeah, there's lots of should, good uh, discussions about this out there. Huh. I'm thinking about that one for a while. I think it. I think it can go either way. Yeah. Values, though. Yeah. I think, I think probably it would lean more towards yes, but not always. Yeah, because, I, yeah, again, not every protagonist is a good person. Yeah. And there's lots of stories about bad people. Yeah. Flawed people, yeah. even if they're good at heart, kind of. Mm -hmm. it's, very, it's very interesting. Very good question. Ikerbash is asking, what were some of your previous jobs? Ooh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> what was one of your favorite previous jobs? Um, I worked at a children's bookstore for a while, which I've talked about before. It was a fantastic kids uh, kids bookstore in Vancouver called Kids Books. Um, I also I worked at a children's portrait studio, which oh, was fun. usually fun, but always. <laughs> I, <can't, yeah, laughs> um, yeah, I, I was in photography school at the time, so it was, yeah, I was trying to do anything I could related to photography. Um, I've had a lot of just like retail jobs. Like I said, I met Crane and Robert working at a toy store. Um, I've done office jobs, like, like administrative assistant kind of things. Uh, She's done everything. I've done everything. <laughs> Briefly server, but I was never very good at it. <laughs> Same goes for like a hostess at, at a restaurant. I was just terrible at it. This is a long, long list. But uh, she bounced around. I bounced around, and then I found my place. So yeah. don't worry if you feel like you're stuck in retail. Something won't be forever. Jules rules the books. Is asking any chance we can get more science-themed things in books? 
yeah um yeah i'm always trying to get them in whenever possible we've got a it's kind of sciencey it's more math based but um there's some fun kind of math coding kind of stuff in uh in the april box um what do we have coming up in may mm -hmm. I will, it's it's always in the back of my mm -hmm. mind because I love having fun sciencey kind of stuff. Yeah. Any kind of like STEM activity Experience, I can get yeah. in. Um, so yes, as much as possible, I will make that happen. So if music is asking, do you have any pets? And if so, what are their names? I don't have any pets. Um, I live in a pet-free building right now. Um, Pout. Pout, indeed. <laughs> I grew up with a cat and a dog named Flora and Bear, respectively. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, my boyfriend is allergic to everything under the sun, but we've talked about getting a pet frog one day. <laughs> That's cute. Which I think would be fun. I don't, I don't know what I would have to feed them. Gr grubs, probably. <laughs> but Some kind I can of handle that. Um, so yes, no pets. Someday. Someday for sure. I'm an aunt to a dog named Hank. Aaron Staunton XS is asking, what book are you most excited about upcoming? Ooh. Um... There's one I just talked about in a video a couple weeks ago called, I think it's called Tristan Strong Punches mm. a Hole in the Sky. It's the, it doesn't come out until next January, 2020, but um, it's one of the new releases on the Rick Riordan imprint. And it's got like, uh, like African folklore and mm. uh, it sounds it really, looks really cool. neat. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. Cool. Among so many others. <laughs> is it? My desk is overflowing with stacks of books right now. It's true. Everyone here can corroborate. <laughs> and uh, I'm excited. I keep. I need more time to read, guys. But I'm excited for a lot of stuff coming up in the next year. Cool. AO Tales is asking what is the most challenging part of curating Alcard Jr.? Most challenging part? Time management. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I think time management. <laughs> uh, there's sort of like always three months up in the air at any yeah. given time, usually. So like making sure production's on track and I'm talking to the art, my artists when I need to and that uh, that like I'm on top of uh, my reading and uh, yeah, just like working sure within a schedule so that everything like clicks along at yeah. a, a regular pace. That That is the most challenging part for me. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Ao Tales also says this is for my eight-year-old. What is your favorite Harry Potter character, and do you like dragons? I love dragons. <laughs> oh, uh, I've been getting a bunch of. This is only related to the second part. Um, dragon seems to be a big theme in middle grade coming out in the next so year. Exciting. I have so many dragon books on my desk right now, so I would really like to make a dragon box in the near future. Um, so yes, I love dragons, and that is an excellent question. Now, who's my favorite character in Harry Potter? It's a hard one. It's a really hard one. I really love McGonagall. Mm -hmm. And I really love Hermione. I'll go with them. Sounds good. Go with my gut. From the same person. Mm -hmm. uh, you pick fantastic books. What do you look for in a book for your Alcor Jr. books? Um, that's a great question. Uh, it has to have awesome characters, awesome writing, great story. And it also needs to be something that, like, I can actually build a whole theme around mm -hmm. and that uh, I think will appeal to a, a, wide, a wide enough audience. Um, so there's, yeah, every once in a while there'll be, like, an amazing one that I read. I actually just finished one that's a great example of this. Um, uh, loved the book, loved the characters but decided not to do it in an Alcrate Junior box because it dealt with some like really heavy topics and it wouldn't be something I'd want to necessarily theme. Theme. Mm. Um, yeah, it, sometimes it doesn't really feel like appropriate to build a theme around something. Yeah. Um, but, uh, or, or I wouldn't want to sort of send it out unprepared if, if the parents didn't know that that's what the kids were reading and then there's like uh, suddenly a lot of questions. Right. I wouldn't totally feel comfortable with that. So I have to kind of like balance that. So like great stories. I don't necessarily like shy away from sad books or something. Like Stormkeeper's Island is a good example mm -hmm. of that. That there was there was like big topics, big feelings in it, but also it made for an amazing theme. Right. It's such a cool story. 
yeah, it's kind of just a gut feeling and it changes month to month, obviously, with the books that, that come across my desk, but yeah. All right. No, oh, this one was for me. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got for me? It said, and asking her the hardest question there is, what's better, dogs or middle grade books? <laughs> Um, what's you know better? Sally, Sally is obsessed with dogs and middle graders, so... Oh, I mean... Hmm. Should have ended with that question. <laughs> I don't want to betray middle grade, but I think I have to go with dogs here. Because there are so many other kinds of books that I also love. But there's no other dogs. There's no other dogs. <laughs> uh, Dogs win. Dogs win? Yeah, we like, uh, we like dogs here. Yeah. But we love middle grade too. I love, obviously I love middle grade, so you know how much I love dogs. Because that I made the tough call there. <laughs> oh, and this one was from Karina. This is, how are you so awesome and talented and cool? Here's a fact. <laughs> um, uh, I wasn't cool in school at all. I think that that helps me be cool now. <laughs> I was a, a real nerd. So there you go. All right, so we have one more question. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a hard question, but I feel like you can do it. Okay. Um, it's from Books and Mac, and she said, what book would, you, would your teenage self really appreciate? Ooh, that's such a good question. This is the one we're, we're ending on, so the pressure's on to find a good answer. <laughs> I remember Karina introduced me to The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Mm -hmm. um, and I read it, yeah, so that would have been like a decade ago that I read it, because that's As always been one of hers. But I, yeah, I don't think that was out even when I was in high school. Right. So I think that would be a good one. See, <sighs> I feel like that's not quite the right answer for me though. Right. This is going to take a lot of thought. <laughs> My brain went to, and it, I think we were lucky because they were out when we were teenagers and that's Harry Potter. They, oh no, they were. I, the first three were out already when I was like four, 14. Yeah, I, they started in 97, so. Right. I didn't discover them until the third one was right. out. Yeah. But those are like, we were lucky that we were yeah. able to have those in high school. Yeah. I'm just trying to do some mental math here. So I would have been in like 12th, 12th grade when the, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I was very, very happy to, to mm -hmm. have Harry Potter in, in high oh, school. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of one that I've like read as an adult that mm -hmm. I was like, oh, if only, and I'm fully blanking. That's such a good question, but it's it's throwing me into a tailspin. <laughs> no. Maybe we'll, we'll put a little down bar. Yeah. After when I'm editing, if Sally thinks of one. Okay. We can do that. Yeah. I have the magic cool. question. All right. So that was Sally's Q and A. Thank you, everybody who already asking questions. Yeah. There some no good ones. Great there. questions, everybody. Um, we'll do a few more of these Q and A videos over the coming months. Yes. So for other members of the team, so it's gonna be very exciting. Mm -hmm. If you have other questions for me, put them in the comments. Yeah, Sally can peruse the comments yeah. and ask you your questions. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos every week. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye. Bye.